If you don't shift away from the way you think about CFSME and fibro, you're going to continue to abdicate the control of your health and your well-being and even the possibility for your healing. So a question came across my feed last night, and I, I found it and the answers to be fairly disturbing. It was a patient with chronic fatigue syndrome who was looking for hope, asking about if anybody knew if there's any uh, researchers that found a cause or, or any research on a new drug for the condition. The problem with this question is that there will never be a smoking gun to chronic fatigue syndrome, as much as we would like to see it. The syndrome of CFSME does not fit into that particular paradigm of modern medicine. There is and never will be a single cause. There is and never will be a single drug that fixes that cause. Now, that's a harsh statement to be sure, but that's the reality. The disturbing part about the question is that this person is resigned to the fact that they are waiting for modern medicine to fix them. And sadly, that day will never come. That doesn't mean there's not answers. It just means they're not going to come from that paradigm. 25 years ago, much of my research uh, while I was in med school was on chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, myalgic encephalitis, and fibromyalgia. So I remember uh, one presentation that we did, it had this scattergram of all the documented metabolic abnormalities and associations that we find with CFSME and fibro. And back then, there were over 100 abnormalities found correlated uh, with, that, with that patient population. They spanned the entirety of the body. Metabolic problems, immune system issues, cardiovascular, endocrine, neurologic, and the list goes on. And each of those PhD scientists who did that research, they found correlations between those abnormalities and that patient population that were diagnosed with chronic fatigue. But... None could find a cause. And to this day, that continues to be true. Associations, but not cause. We have so many more abnormalities now that we've associated with this condition again, but no cause. They will not find that smoking gun or the one cause of CFSME because the causes are many. And, and that's not to say that there aren't very real and a very actionable underlying problems that set people up for chronic fatigue. Not at all. And one of the answers to that thread in that forum suggested a couple of research papers that actually eliminate chronic fatigue syndrome as a psychosomatic condition. The reality is that just about every condition that we suffer from today, if it's not infectious, is psychosomatic. You know, the idea of separating the mind and the brain from the body is absolutely ridiculous. You just have to look to one of the number one killers in our country to know this to be true, cardiovascular disease. Any doctor that denies that stress leads to hypertension shouldn't have a medical license or that emotional states are predictive in the outcome in the treatment of cancer. The fact that stress induces immunologic change, which can allow us to get sick more easily. These things are well-documented. They're accepted as fact in both animal and human research. So, I mean, ultimately, pretty much everything that we suffer from is psychosomatic. Now, let me be very clear. There are very real biochemical, metabolic, cellular abnormalities found in patients with CFSME and fibro. It is a very real physical condition. This is not all in your head. The triggers to eventually developing CFSME are many. And again, well-documented. I see it in my patients on a daily basis. It was ever since such and such things have gone down to hell. You, you fill in the blank. You know, my divorce, that toxic exposure, that bad infection, you know, name one, there's many. Ever since that trauma, ever since that extra stress at work, what all these conditions or situations have in common is that they were the straw that broke the camel's back. That was just the tip of the iceberg, though. The rest of that iceberg has been slowly forming for years, if not decades, to get us to that tipping point of collapse. The disturbing part of the question and subsequent answers is that it takes the control away from the patients themselves. It also takes away our responsibility for dealing with our own health and well-being. It's disempowering. And it'll lead to a progression of the disease and a lack of treatment that is available to you right now, today. I'm not saying your condition is your fault, but at this point, it is your responsibility. CFSME and fibro, and yes, I lump them together, despite people wanting to separate them out, the abnormalities and the crossovers are too many not to do so. These conditions are actually the result of a broken stress response system. That particular system, that part of our physiology, it happens to control the rest of our physiology, which is why the symptoms of that are so diverse and so multisystemic and so confounding to patients and doctors alike. And if you want to get into the weeds about the research on what the stress response system is and it entails, look no further to the work of Bruce McEwen and George Cruces. They are well-respected, well-published pioneers in the field. But basically, the stress response, there's three parts. There's a hormone side, there's a nerve side, and then there's the brain. 
They work in concert with one another. You cannot possibly affect one without affecting the other. A broken stress response system as a condition, it just doesn't have a name. It just has terms in research. It's HPA axis dysregulation. It's dysautonomia, central sensitization, hypocortisolism. Or we describe the broken stress response system by talking about the symptoms that comes from it. It's anxiety, pain, depression, fatigue, waking, brain fog, cognitive issues. Or we'll describe this condition in terms of the secondary downline effects, the cardiovascular disease, immune problems, digestive problems, reproductive problems, hormone abnormalities, hypothyroidism, autoimmune disease. Dig into the research, and these connections are very well and powerfully documented. This model of understanding what CFS and fibro actually are, it doesn't fit into this reductionist way of thinking that we have in modern medicine today. We believe for decades that if we dig deeper and deeper and deeper into the system, into the organ, and then into the tissue and into the cells, we can actually find one trigger for the disease that we're researching. It doesn't work that way. If we stay on that microscopic level and never step out away and zoom out, outside the cells, into the tissues, into the organs, into the systems, and treating the body as a whole, you will make very little substantial progress. The best name that I can provide for this condition would actually be to call it allostatic overload syndrome. Feel free to research, but for now, I'm going to refer to it as something a little more familiar called adrenal fatigue. Yep, adrenal fatigue. And if you rolled your eyes and thought, okay, here we go, adrenal fatigue isn't a thing, I would strongly encourage you at this very moment Suspend your disbelief. Open your mind to think more like a child with curiosity. Let go of beliefs in what everybody has told you and the truths that you've now accepted as how you know things are and should be. What your medical doctor has told you is or isn't real. I urge you to not get caught up in the semantics of the thing because doing that will unfortunately lead to your inability to heal and get your life back. I don't like the term adrenal fatigue for lots of reasons. One of the main ones is that when you have a stress response system dysfunction, you have more of a dysregulation or dysfunction in the adrenals, not just low cortisol, as the name suggests. And so the conclusion is that the adrenals aren't a problem because there's no consensus. It's the wrong way to think about this thing. Things are not always low. Things are not always high. They are dysfunctional. It's not black or white. To understand and ultimately fix this problem, we have to get really comfortable with the gray. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't fit into the world of randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trials and a drug, you know, one drug for one disease model. I suggest you walk away from that model. I'm not walking away from modern medicine. That's not what I'm saying. But walking away from that paradigm and that thought process because it's holding you back and keeping you sick. But if my leg was broken, if I'm bleeding out, I want modern medicine to save my life. When I need surgery, I want modern medicine by my side. But the problem is for most of the conditions that we suffer from today on a daily basis, it's just not that simple. To fix this condition, we need a systems approach. And yes, you absolutely can fix this condition. I see it all the time in my practice. Is it easy? No. Is it quick? No. But can it happen? 100%. The challenge is that we can't truly fix a problem unless we understand what that problem is. Now, me getting into the exact underlying mechanisms of how a broken stress response system is contributing to each and every one of your symptoms or is contributing to every one of those documented abnormalities that we found 25 years ago and we still find today in research on CFSME is beyond the scope of this conversation. This conversation is really more about how you need to look at not only this condition differently, but health and disease in generally and ultimately wellness. To heal from this condition you don't have to know all the details and the idiosyncrasies of, of it that I've learned for 25 years, but you better have a doctor guiding you that does. Because if you don't, my fear is that you'll be waiting around for a drug for chronic fatigue that will never come. Waiting for somebody to find that smoking gun or that one elusive infectious agent that's causing everybody's chronic fatigue. If you don't shift away from the way you think about CFSME and fibro, you're going to continue to abdicate the control of your health and your well-being and even the possibility for your healing. It is well documented that the lack of control over something is stress-inducing, which is then going to snowball in this condition of a broken stress response system. So gain control. Your condition is not your fault. I want to make that clear. You didn't ask for the various stressors or triggers in your life, but now that we're here, it is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to understand how you got here to understand how to move forward, and then to understand how to manage your life 
and your health in the very predictable ways it works so that you can incrementally get your life back. I've had patients in my practice functioning at 10%, right? Not just housebound, but bedridden, barely able to make it to the bathroom and then back to bed. But there's milder versions of this condition as well. So I've had patients functioning at 20, 30, 40, 50% and more. No matter where you start, you can still heal. Depending on where you start, recovery from this condition might be inch by inch, not mile by mile. The job of your clinician, your coach, your guide, your mentor is to help you expedite that process. There will be ups and downs in that healing process. This I can promise you. You likely even know that already. Healing from this condition, no matter what we call it, is nothing like anything you've ever experienced before. But treatment must be holistic, comprehensive, multifactorial. We have to take in mind the whole body and the whole mind into account on a daily basis in order to be able to move forward. It's going to take time, patience, guidance, and support. But mostly it's going to be a team effort. And with the right team, you can heal. I encourage you to stop chasing the symptoms and stop chasing the secondary and tertiary conditions and treat the underlying cause. Don't worry about the name. Don't stress about nobody understanding it. Let's just get to work on fixing it.